It's season 17 of Apex Legends and you still have yet to drop your first 20 bomb. You may feel that at this point, you're simply just not good enough to get one. And so you may be thinking about giving up. You've heard all the basic tips that YouTubers will give you. Land hot, third party people, hit your shots. But what's holding you back is that you need a deeper understanding of how the game works and how fights work. And so with this 20 bomb gameplay provided with some commentary, I intend on helping you guys with that. But what's equally as important is ridding yourself from any excuse that's holding you back. If you're watching this video, I don't want to hear any excuses. Excuses are just like buttholes. Everyone has one. And they stink. So I need you guys to be honest and critical with yourselves. What is truly holding you back from getting your first 20 bomb? Leave a comment about areas that you can improve on and things that you've struggled with. I promise people will love to hear that stuff. And go into this video with a growth mindset. That is the exact mindset that will help you become whatever you want to be. Stop limiting yourself. Here is how anyone can unlock the 20 bomb badge in season 17 of Apex Legends. Without further ado, let's get it. Bam ba bam bam bam. Here I am fighting a very overzealous Wraith off-rip. Notice how I switch weapons while sliding towards her, effectively closing the gap, utilizing unpredictable movement, all in one fluid constant motion. I am weak now and I waste no time to heal, but I fall back towards my teammate to do so, because now they have an angle to support me. I get pushed by the ash, so I have to cancel my heal and dish out as much damage as possible. Luckily, my teammate was able to finish her off easily, but I made it easy for my teammates to do so. That's because I'm always aware of my teammates and where they're at, so staying on the left side of these bins opens up an angle for my teammates to shoot the ash whereas if i stayed on the right side of the boxes that would cut off the line of sight that my teammate would have on the ash and we were still going to win this fight regardless but it just makes it more difficult for your teammates so always be aware of your teammates position on the map moving on to the next fight this is where i'll discuss the three r's of apex that i created retreat reassess re-engage we have a team in front of us and this new castle is very split from his teammates to the right and as we're pushing him i notice shots coming at him towards the left this signifies another team after they knocked him i know that his two teammates are to the the right and a full three stack third party to the left these are situations that you have to be comfortable in if you want to drop your first 20 bomb you can't run away from every third party you need those kills but at the same time i get fuse ulted and so i'm forced to fall back i then re-engage with a third party who's rotating from left to right and i'm able to crack one but then I get fried by a triple take, and so I fall back to heal. But look how I do so behind cover, sitting in an area that my teammates have an easy angle to watch over me. This is the first R, retreat. I overextended a bit and now I'm weak, and as I'm healing, I'm reassessing the situation. Is this something that I want to fight? I notice that I don't have a lot of heals left, and a fight here would be kind of forced. So I don't move on to the third R, which is re-engage. Instead, I elect to fall back. Understanding these three R's and executing them in-game is the most important tip that I can give you to dropping 20 bombs or just improving at the game overall. Players really struggle with that and so just remember that it's always okay to retreat so as long as you're reassessing the situation. To drop a 20 bomb you need kills but first and foremost you need to stay alive so start getting better with that. Now we have my favorite part of this video. 14 squads left, 37 people, a 20 bomb is still possible. You only really need about 5 kills at this point to drop one but make sure you're rotating fast to the next fight. And we do exactly that and found about 3 teams fighting here. I utilize my abilities as they're intended and I ult the building to the left where the other two teams are fighting to buy me and my team some time to fight this team inside this building. Utilizing my abilities, I break the door and challenge this Loba. I have her insanely weak, but she got me back pretty good, and so I'm forced to fall back and heal. But while I'm healing, I notice my Horizon is fighting this team inside still, and my Bloodhound is not supporting them at all. Instead, my Bloodhound should have pushed with the Horizon to watch over her, give me some time to heal up, and then I could support both of them. But the Bloodhound doesn't do that, and now my Horizon dies. Now I'm left doing the job that my Bloodhound should have been doing, but I'm not the healthiest, and I get fried, and my teammate goes down, and my Bloodhound teammate is still nowhere near. If you struggle with your positioning in your fight, a general rule of thumb is going to be play next to your teammate that's the weakest or the teammate that may be potentially overextended. This can help you get easy kills and win more of your fights and help you to unlock that first 20 bomb. As I'm slow healing, my teammate goes down and this is just me being special. I get a knock on the third party, but I notice that one of the other teammates inside is down, so I'm in a 1v2. The lifeline challenges me and I clip her. The mirage that was reviving cancels it and challenges me. I reload and with amazing tracking, I one clip him. That's your basic 1v2. If I didn't knock the lifeline right there, I'm dead. So be sure when you're trying to drop your first 20 bomb, they really capitalize on these third parties because that's when the enemy is most discombobulated and more susceptible to being killed. But I'm not done yet. There's still another team nearby. I armor swap quickly and run behind this door to pop a med kit. In order to drop your first 20 bomb, you're going to have to win uncomfortable situations. 1v1s, 1v2s, 1v3s. This is how you win a 1v3. 
I have one wraith pushing me and I don't see any of her teammates nearby. I fall back to reload my weapon, I make myself small, and I allow her to push me. Then at that moment I hop out. She had a couple really good shots but she's very weak and I still don't see any of her teammates. So I must kill her right here and I do. At that moment I now know her teammates were coming behind me the whole time. I don't know where the hell they were at. I drop off my armor, pick up a new one to give me a quick armor swap later. I hear the Loba in the garage as the Bloodhound is flanking me, do major damage onto the Loba, now she's out of the fight. I grab the armor swap and I turn on the Bloodhound. He's very weak so I must finish him. And I do. Now it's a 1v1. Try to armor swap, nothing in it. The Loba's right next to me. She pops a battery. I don't have a mag on my R3 but I was able to crack her. She got me very weak but she makes a mistake and I'm able to finish her off. Some things I want to note. I already talked about my teammates poor positioning. I already talked about capitalizing off of third parties, killing them in their moment of weakness. But I wanted to touch on a few more things. When that Wraith pushed me, notice how I made it look like I was running away. But instead I held my ground, made myself small so I was hard to see, and I essentially jump scare her when she's not ready. That is such a good tactic to understand. Most people would have kept running, but what did I mention? If you want to drop these 20 bomb games, you need to win 1v3s and 1v2s. And it's all a matter of separating them into individual 1v1s. The Wraith was solo and overextended. I play it perfectly, and now she is weak. If I saw her teammates outside of that door, I would have been forced to run away. But I don't see them. There's no sign of them anywhere. So I assume that they weren't in the building in front of me, because if they were, they would have shown their face by now. So this was a safe assumption by me. I also need to use this time to thirst that Wraith. But I also have to assume that her teammates are now going to push me. Where exactly? Well, I'm listening for that. And I heard them come from behind me. There is no reason to flank when you're in a 2v1 situation. Now you're just giving the solo enemy individual 1v1s. You're making it easier for them. And I had a lot of armor swaps in that building. I was not losing that fight. And I know that armor swap play is something that a lot of you guys don't practice. Sure, you could leave them in the box. But that could take a couple seconds longer. And if you have the chance, drop our armor swap onto the ground. Pick up a new armor. So when you need to armor swap later, you could do so in half a second. And that's what allowed me to win that 1v2 right here. Yes, I hit my shots. A lot of you guys struggle with that. But if you can improve on your IQ and your awareness, you'll give yourself such an advantage over the enemy that you'll create some sort of leniency when it comes to hitting your shots. Your positioning and strategy is the most important. I would prefer you to practice that over trying to perfect your shot. If you play the game long enough, your shot will come. My precise aim comes from playing the game. I don't do anything in the firing range. I don't warm up. I get repetitions in game and learn from that. Moving on. We pull up yet again on an opportunistic third party, which is what you should be looking for when dropping your first 20 bomb. That's when the kills are the easiest. Be sure to always take high ground first, get a bird's eye view over everything, and then push from there. And that's what I do. And as soon as I jump down, there's a wraith in front of me and I one clipper. She didn't even know I was there. She was the last on her team, so there's still one team left. And you have to assume that they're all three up if you're not paying attention. I pushed the ballistic because he's isolated. His wraith teammate portaled out and left him alone. And then from there, it's a 3v2 situation. I'm shooting nukes, so I get very aggressive and I take the portal. I take the portal and I fall back to use his blue bin as cover. I rechallenge and I get the knock. It's just one guy left and he's running away and I shoot nukes. Now I have 14 kills with 14 people left. I never gas myself up in these videos, but do you see how good I am at isolating every single fight? That's what you guys need to strive for. Poor positioning is the number one killer in this game. Not your aim, not your movement, poor positioning. And I'm trying to beat that into you guys because I know a lot of you guys struggle with that and you may not be aware of it. But after watching this video, you will be more aware. And it's that level of awareness that will help you drop your first 20 bomb. Be honest with yourself and what you're struggling with and stop making excuses. That is how you will drop your first 20 bomb. So now I have 14 kills and I actually tell both of my teammates, yo, can I get my first 20 bomb with Fuse? If you're nice about it, most randoms will help you and maybe they don't. But if you don't say anything, then they'll never know. Both my teammates said, bet, on to the next fight. I get this Bangalore really weak right here but i'm also cracked in the process and my horizon is really weak so instead of pushing forward i heal up and allow my bloodhound to push through he's the healthiest one then i'll play the support the octane jumps down and he isolates himself and so i jump on that and i'm able to get that kill at the same time my bloodhound is communicating that the bangalore is really weak and that she jumped down so i'm listening to my teammates comms even when i'm in the middle of a fight and i go and get that bangalore kill just like that i now have 16. you need to have open ears and open eyes at all times i need four more kills and i recognize that this valkyrie up top is alone don't know if she's solo or if she has a team but I don't care. She's up here by herself. So I push her, but she runs away. Now I'm faced with the two teams that are fighting beneath me. To drop your first 20 bomb, you need a higher sense of urgency. Every second you waste is an enemy killed by somebody else. So loot quick, rotate fast, and get to the next third party. I throw a million grenades and miss everything because I'm trash, but I have two guys in front of me and I need these kills. Utilizing my abilities, I ult them, which forces them to vacate their cover. My teammate goes down, but I'm able to kill advantage before she kills my bloodhound. I now take my attention to the next threat, the pathfinder. I get him super weak, but my teammate 
accidentally kills him. Either way, there's one guy left. Instead of pushing through, I heal up just to be safe. But now I'm being shot by the last team. Once I heal up, I quickly turn the corner to cut off their line of sight, and I go and push the last guy. He was reviving and still very weak. He should have been healed up by now. I get that last kill, and I only need two more now. Instead of popping this medkit, I revive my teammate with a gold bag, just to even the odds of this fight. As the third party is pushing, my Bloodhound teammate cracks a fuse, and I'm aware of that by paying attention to the kill feed. I climb up, and I'm able to kill the Maggie while telling my teammate, please don't kill her. Then I turn the corner to where the fuse was that was already cracked, and I finish him off, and just like that, I have 20 kills. My first 20 bomb with fuse ever. Do you see why I prefer this method of teaching over the typical tip format? Get kills, loot quick, land at this POI, play a movement legend. Nah. By giving you guys access into my mind, I can help give you guys a better understanding of the game. And by practicing all of the things that I've mentioned, if you can get good with that, then everything else follows suit and you can achieve whatever you want in this game. And that's how anyone can drop their first 20 bomb in season 17. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And let's get to 50,000. Thank you guys so much. Bam, ba, bam, bam, bam. Bam, ba, bam, 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 ba, 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 bam, 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 bam,